All right, welcome back guys. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we have some parts, so hopefully we can get this thing thrown back together, slam it back in the razor, and keep on trucking. But if you haven't already, go check out part one where we tear this thing down, kind of see what's going on with it. We thought we had blown it up, but in all reality, it looks like it was just the sprag got uh, stuck in the ring gear here. So we probably could have knocked it free, put it back together and carried on about our business, but I'd rather do it right so that we don't have to go down this road again. But we'll probably be down this road again. So stick with us. We're gonna unbox this thing together, see what all's inside, get everything put in here. So stay tuned and follow along. All right, I've opened the box, but I have not dug into the box. So we're gonna see what's inside the box. Now from previous experience with HD Extreme, their packaging is pretty good. Um, they really cram everything in here. So here's our new Sprag. Should have rollers and everything in it. Um, always, oh yeah, see, always check your box. Make sure there's nothing else in it. They sent us a koozie. Very nice. Always nice to have extra koozies. So, now for the good stuff. Let's see what's in here. All right, the moment of truth. Mm. That's nice. Now, I'm definitely keeping this, this little cover, because um, I think that'll be a lot easier than trying to you know, makeshift some zip ties every time, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get this thing, uh, opened up, get it in here and see how it goes. Again, it's just as hot today as it was last time and it's not getting any cooler. An AC shop would be really, really nice, but you know, you got to work with what you got. So let's, uh, get this thing wiped down, get it back in here. And go from there. Actually, before we put this ring gear back in, last time I showed you guys these grooves that are down in here. Again, like I said, they're not bad, but I do want to brush them off with a Brillo pad just to make sure that we don't have anything catch or get hung. Again, try and keep as much, uh, avoid as much possibility of having to go back into this thing as possible. So. We're gonna get this thing cleaned up, then we'll get it back in the diff. Always wanna make sure that the parts you're working with are extremely clean before they go back in. This stuff's my favorite. I don't know why, I just like using it. Make sure we get rid of any extra debris that may be caught or hung up. And give it one more nice little once over wipe down. Make sure everything's out of there. All right, now we can go back in. So another thing I wanna point out is this one didn't come out, but you do have a shim that goes between the ring gear and the case. So you just wanna make sure that you don't lose that because it is important. All right. Now, here's the fun part and the part I hate because most likely Just like that, definitely keeping this. That was a lifesaver. All right. So now, the next thing we wanna do is our spring. Again, wipe it down, make sure it's nice and clean. If we can eliminate as much debris as possible, that is ideal. I think it might rain today. 
If you haven't ever done one of these, your spring basically, here I'll just take it off and show you again. So it'll be like that. Basically all you wanna do is squeeze it where it overlaps, slide it over your roll pin, set it down. And that's all there is to it. And you wanna take this. Now we didn't get the billet one only because I really didn't see a point in it. Um, they say it's a common wear problem, but I have yet to break one. So until we break one, we're just gonna keep riding this guy out. But one thing to note is you have a little roll pin on this as well. So you wanna just make sure that you line that up with your other roll pin. Make sure that everything seats nice and flush. And then you can move on to your armature plate. Now again, we've got the 12 tooth armature plate. So far, this thing's been holding up great. It hasn't you know, gotten any twist in it or bends or anything like that. It seems to be pretty strong, so. No need in replacing what's not broken. Boom, just like that. Lines right up, very nice. And last but not least, the magnet. So I'm gonna clean this thing up. Wait, we do need this. Definitely want this. That's important too. Okay. I'm gonna clean this up real quick and we'll get it back together. And another thing, always check your seals and your bearings. Just make sure that they're good. Um, these aren't that old, so I know that they're still in good shape. Um, I think I think the seals have two rods on them and the bearings are only a year old. And when we messed up the diff, we didn't really keep running it all that much. So um, the bearings didn't eat each other up or anything like that, or any of the debris eat the bearings up, I guess, I guess I should say. So we know we're good there. We don't have to replace any of that. But this thing is ready to go back on. You want to try and just put even pressure around the seal because I don't know if you can see it or not but right here we have a lip so we could push that in with a small little screwdriver but I would rather try to avoid compromising it if I can so what we're gonna do is just slowly work it down Patience is key. And I don't have any. Yep, there we go. See, one step back isn't always a bad thing. And for all you guys that start bolts with an impact, kudos to you. Not me. Because the last thing I want to do today is fix broken threads or strip threads. Not a good time. Let's get it down. We'll go back over that by hand. You don't want to over tighten these because they do not require a whole lot of torque. They just need to be snug. Again, I don't want to be in the broken bolt business today. You just make sure that they're all nice and evenly tight. I like to go in a star pattern, but that's just me, you do you. The wires that go in to the diff. Now, a lot of times, like mine are, they're bad about getting chafed and messed up. Now, they can break or they can also short out. I'm going to try to fix these real quick, um, but if yours are too far beyond repair, then HD Extreme does offer a whole new cover. Uh, I can't remember exactly how much it is off the top of my head, but just go to their website, check it out and they'll get you squared away on that. But like I said, I'm gonna try to fix mine if I can. I 
honestly don't know that I'll be able to. It's pretty, uh, pretty close down in here, but I think we're just gonna send it. One more thing to note, always, 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 always. Check your threads, make sure they're not gummed up with a bunch of dirt or any other kind of debris. Um, as you can tell, mine have some junk in them. What'll happen is you go to zip it down with the bolt, it packs all that dirt in there, it won't go anymore, and then you strip the threads or break a bolt, that sort of thing. Again, today, I don't wanna be in the broken bolt or strip thread business, so the way I like to do it, just take a, a little pick, get out as much as the big stuff as you can, and then either use some brake cleaner, kind of clean it out some more, or an air hose to kind of blow it out. Again, not, not hard at all, just one of those extra steps to prevent a much unwanted headache. So, now we'll get this thing blown out with some air, then we'll get it back in. All right, just another word of advice or a quick little tidbit, especially if this is your first time doing this. Before you get too far ahead of yourself and get this drive shaft and diff back in, make sure the hole lines up for the roll pin. Cause if not, then you gotta pull it all back out and realign it and it's just a pain. So keep that in mind, just uh, you know, in case you need it. Quick question for you guys. Now I know all of us do this. I'm pretty sure all of us do this. Whenever you're strapping something down, like in a truck bed or on a trailer, when you get done and you say, yeah, that's not going anywhere. That's appropriate, I know that. But now when it comes to tightening bolts, does the same rule apply? Cause I definitely just tightened all of these differential bolts. When I got done, I was like, yeah, that's not going anywhere. I don't know, just curious. All right, we are just about finished up with this thing. We've got the diff in. We've got everything bolted back together, ready to go. The only thing we have left is we need to torque down the wheel bearings and we need to fill it up with some fluid. We'll be ready to go, see if four-wheel drive works and uh, go from there. All right, so it is the next day. We, uh, we ran out of time the other night, so we had to pack it up for the evening, but we're back at it now. We've got the diff filled up with fluid. We've got our wheel bearing or our axle nuts tight. So everything's good there. Now we're ready to just pull this thing out and uh, see if four wheel drive works or not. So we did just verify that four wheel drive is working. So we are all set there. The only thing we have left to do now is to order the hardware pack from RCV to fix our drive shaft seal issue. But other than that, this thing is uh, this thing's ready to go rip again, finally. Yeah. 